corporate strategy development and management in the district, including Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos. And um, he is a graduate from the Cal State Fulton with a Bachelor of Art degree in Business Administration. And he is an active member in Amsham, that's where I first met him. And he's also served as a board member for Amsham Thailand Charitable Foundation. So please welcome him. Well, great, and, and thanks for, for the invite to uh, share with you a little bit about FedEx and our commitment to CSR and really about our, our citizenship program that uh, we encapsulate all of our strategies under. So today, what I'll do, you know, I'll <clears throat> try to keep it to about 20 minutes and then any Q&A time we have is, uh, is, is fine. Um, but being a global player, I mean, FedEx is uh, definitely committed to social responsibility. It's, of course, not only an economic advantage, but of course, it's the right thing to do and becoming more and more the right thing to do uh, each and every uh, each and every day. It's a commitment that's supported from the top. I mean, Fred Smith, I don't know how, how much you know about FedEx, but started in 1974. Uh, our founder is still a CEO and chairman of FedEx, and he's very committed to this program and, and continues to be to this day. But today I'll talk a little bit about how FedEx uh, uses this global citizenship strategy uh, in the world around us, and then I'll talk a little bit about what we're doing here in time and how that fits in for you all. Okay. Now, as a global company, you know, FedEx really does enable trade uh, in all that we do. Um, we support open markets, open access, and efficient trade, delivering economic possibilities at every step. <clears throat> We're committed to finding sustainable solutions to meet the needs of communities around us. Now, we do this really focused in three areas. The first is economic connections. And our aim is to help people connect, help people do business. We need really 90% of the world's GDP, trying to give them efficient trade channels. Through these, we believe and we contribute to uh, economic and social well-being. When you look at it, open access markets, it does bring up everybody's quality of life. Secondly, it's about efficiency in the environment. Uh, we've got 650 airplanes, we've got 100,000 vehicles out there, 5,000 facilities. It just makes economic sense and, of course, environmental sense. Last year, for example, um, through aircraft fuel reduced usage, we saved almost $310 million. We also avoided a million metric tons of CO2 emissions. And then third is we believe in the power of people. Certainly we've got to involve all our people in everything that we do uh, to really uh, make these programs a success. And why is it important? I mean, clearly business success is increasingly driven by the perception of those communities you serve and those stakeholders. And certainly uh, we see that as a value to our brand, to trust, and the commitment to the community. Last year, FedEx gave about $45 million, and of course, thousands of hours helping in charitable causes. We also are involved in relief efforts, of course. Our strength with the logistics allows us to uh, get involved in those things. Just a few, uh, the Nepal earthquake, wanted a million dollars. We also have contributed to the about outbreak, uh, and most recently, a uh, million dollars to the uh, European migrant crisis. <clears throat> this is just a picture of our solar facility. We don't have any of these in Thailand, uh, but we have them throughout the U.S. and some in Europe. Uh, and last year in the U.S., uh, we were recognized uh, for being one of the top 25 solar generating companies to the U.S., again reducing you know, 4,000 metric tons of CO2. So it's played a, a critical part as well. 
You know, I've been with FedEx for about 29 years, and, and when we started, we never could have purchased new airplanes. We'd always buy old airplanes, passenger airplanes, and convert them. The, few, the technology has changed so much now. Uh, none of you, you might have read, I mean, we put orders out with flying 777s, 787s that are brand new, right off the line. Because of that fuel, and it makes sense business-wise, the fuel efficiency and the range in the airplane, but also from a carbon footprint standard as well. Okay, and now into a little bit about <clears throat> what FedEx supports. This is a picture of Thailand as far as our access to work we do, but we're committed uh, to educating the youth. Uh, we, we do that through junior achievement here in Thailand, which I'll talk a little bit more about. Uh, we do it um, with a couple of programs, one called uh, uh, International Trade Challenge, and this is our access to work. So we're committed to educating youth and opening up uh, their minds to, to really uh, uh, world markets. And then we also support SMEs, knowing that we are, we're a global link for SMEs to really reach products beyond their borders. Uh, and and with, the, uh, with the SMEs, we've teamed up with the U.S. Embassy uh, in the Commercial Services Department, the Know and Grow program, uh, which supports over 100 educational events each year. And as I mentioned, uh, our people are, are the key and I'll talk a bit more about that, how we continue to drive the volunteerism. Uh, and, and it's really something that's become successful. I'll share some stories from Thailand on that, on that vein. <clears throat> so we take that and uh, that global strategy of corporate citizenship and giving, and then we break it down in Thailand. We, uh, we focus it in really four areas, uh, education, Emergency and disaster relief, child pedestrian safety, and then sustainability. It's just a picture of planting trees out of Khao Yai. Okay. Okay, claim to our strengths. This is a program that we work with uh, Safe Kids Thailand. Uh, it's an organization that is really uh, focused on child safety. The piece that we take uh, is safe kids based upon pedestrian safety. So it's really a perfect fit. We have here in Thailand 200 couriers on the road every day. They see how dangerous the streets are here. And all of you living here, no matter how long you've been, this is a very dangerous place for kids to walk to school, from what we're used to most likely. Uh, it's one of the most dangerous places with the highest accident death rate, one of the highest in the world. Uh, an, an interesting figure here, I mean it is, the second leading cause of death of children under 15 years old. So clearly what this program does is we've got our couriers out there understanding how unsafe certain things are. We don't want them in access. With this program, um, we team up with schools, uh, teachers, parents, and educate them. Bring our couriers in, educate them how to make the walk to and from school safer. So that's been our focus. Here in time since December 2011, We've engaged more than 85,000 students, 5,000 parents, 500 teachers in educating, bringing the awareness up of what little things we can do uh, to make that commute safe to and from school. And again, an example of involving employees, when, when you've got employees that really uh, find they have an expertise to give to really change something, they're really motivated. Um, these events started out with two or three people volunteering, and they, they've grown. Like this Sunday, we have an event that I've got 120 people coming to. So um, it's, it's it's successful. Uh, again, I mentioned the uh, Junior Achievement. Uh, this is an organization that's been around for 100 years. Uh, junior Achievement Thailand started uh, back, I think, around 2009, uh, and we have an International Trade Challenge event. And, and what that is, we go to the schools, the, the kids put together a, uh, a business plan from development all the way through to, to marketing. This is you know, a break-even point, what they have to do to market the product, sell the product. And then we have a competition. So we may have you know, 300 teams competing. We pick the top three teams here in Thailand. 
they go to a competition for the in the region, in the, in the Asia Pacific region. Last year it was held in Singapore, and uh, one of the Thai teams actually took second place. So uh, very innovative thinking team, and it really just brings that uh, uh, that side of the school and what they've learned to bring it out into the real world and see how they can really launch a product um, and teach them about world markets. So it's, it's a great program. And then on the side is just another a safe kids. Uh, example. Basically, we uh, teamed up with the Bangkok Metropolitan Authority and again exited in uh, pictures, paintings of kids who have come up with ways in walking to their school, how they can change that to make it safer. And we've got the local police involved, so you can change something to put a stop here, a cone here, you know, anything that will actually bring attention to the risks and dangers. Uh, just a few more pictures. I mean, again, I mentioned the uh, International Trade Challenge Second Prize team. Uh, <clears throat> the various giving back uh, environmental programs. And then also one of the key areas we're, we're interested in when it comes to education, we, we're a member, um, a, a, a real uh, supporter of the Anchan Charitable Foundation. Now, this foundation, they offer a couple hundred scholarships each year. Uh, and when those kids get to their fourth year, they're, they're graduating, uh, we sponsor a career camp. So we bring the kids in to Thailand, into Bangkok from all over Thailand. They'll come in and they'll do factory tours, meet with different business leaders, have uh, discussions with them, and then we'll run them through mock interviews for a day. Uh, and many companies in, in the chamber will be involved in the mock interviews, and we've had many students hired from the companies too, so it works out um, uh, pretty well. Uh, this is, you know, a school we've adopted 17 schools over the nine years with the Amcham Adopted School. And really, it's, it's, it's more on the hardware side, but it's uh, building the school. Some of the other 65,000 schools in Thailand that, that uh, are not, uh, there's no funding to really keep them, keep them going what they need to have. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll build a school, sometimes adopt and do three or four projects over the next few years to, to, to get the hardware. And of course, you know, the books and things like that, so the hardware side of them. And of course, staying relevant, um, <clears throat> you've always got to uh, keep the programs new and fresh. Uh, so we're always looking to team up with like-minded NGOs, Amcham Charitable Foundation, JAA, Save Kids, and we're always looking at Teacher Plus Foundation that develops teaching skills for the teachers of time, so we can keep those programs relevant. Now here's just a picture, you know, helping out in the 2011 floods. Uh, and one of the one of the many disaster relief uh, things that we we also get involved in. As part of uh, the junior achievement as well, we uh, we rolled out the last couple of years the, the access awards, which is the junior achievement foundation that covers um, education for children all the way from five years old through up to the university. Um, we take part in, in the older kids up into the high school and through the university side of it, um, where we also have access awards where we really take a, a look at what company they've developed and how they looked at international markets and how they can break through those markets and what's really creative there is how we come up with the, with the access awards. But clearly, as I mean, the key in Thailand and all over the world, we've got to, we've got to really start the communication process with the employees early. A call for volunteer memos, briefing papers to let everybody know what's going on, uh, pre-event content, social media, let them know what's happening in the event, what the purposes of the event, and, and, and get everybody's engaged and involved. I mean, Sunday is a, a FedEx Cares Week where we have uh, all over the world, maybe 10,000 employees, 400 cities will be participating in events uh, in their local communities. Our sphere is at Nakasan Community Center where we spell out exactly what we're going to do, a little bit of renovation to the building, uh, some English teaching, donating some books, and then call for volunteers, let them know what you're doing that day, and it really brings in, uh, like I said, we've got 100, 100 and, uh, 120 people involved in that this Sunday. And you know, I know anyone that's uh, participated in community support, time, it's exciting, 
touches your employees in a special way that do something and bring up a person's life. Um, but there's also benefits for us besides a gesture of goodwill. Uh, it makes a difference in the community and the CSR activity. It can involve everybody. It would involve uh, AMCHAM business leaders, ambassadors, city mayors, district village leaders, uh, safety executives to really make a difference. So we're not doing it on our own. We're, we're part of something that can, can really make a, a, distance, a, a di difference in a long-term sustainable kind of commitment uh, that comes out of it. And that's it. So let's start the Q&A question. Anybody has questions? Hello, thank you. I'm Claudia from CSR Asia. I have a few questions, but I'll start with one. Um, it's about how you measure the impact of the CSR activity. Because, like, for example, I was really impressed with the when uh, the activities are linked to your core business, and for example here in Thailand, uh, about the uh, education of children on road safety, is there any way you could like benchmark if it has had an impact on like if there's been a reduction of accidents or or even the other like how like uh, those SMEs or those small kids that like you know. <laughs> Like the, the children that you have funded through the SME program, development program, do you have a way of tracking how many of those have then developed a business in the future? Like, do you have like that kind of long-term uh, monitoring so that you could actually see which of your uh, three or four areas you have, which one has the most impact, and which maybe deserve to receive more funding, or less, or which is uh, functional for your business? Yeah, I mean, let me take the, the, the first one looking at something like Safe Kids. Again, you know, we're out there educating and, and trying to uh, make the streets safer and partnering up with an organization like Safe Kids Worldwide, Safe Kids here in Thailand, is that yeah, they'll measure and you'll have the safety stats in the, in the local municipal area as far as, of course, you'll have a bigger picture, but that's that's a later reflex. But um, you'll, have, you'll have some numbers on injuries. But our focus really is, is more on educating them so that will lead to that reduction in, in safety. So we're constantly looking at the program and its effectiveness, how we can change that just based off of the partners that we're working with too. And junior achievement, now nah, I don't know um, if they've looked at really do these kids go on to start uh, another business. I think um, they'd be interesting to see because some of them, with their businesses in this company program, um, they actually have a product that they sell. And this product becomes a business, so we, we see that um, we see that happening. Uh, whether that business goes on for a few years or ten years or whatever, you know, we, we don't know. But working with Junior Achievement, uh, again, the programs there, we're just focused on two: Access and ITC. But they have Company of the Year, which other companies support. So uh, they'll have um, kid programs for five, and six, and seven years old, really based upon upon education. But not really any tracking mechanism to say how many successful entrepreneurs that we created though. Thank you very much. Uh, you know the CSR activity if it, 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 it is uh, to be sustainable, the of course the company need to get the profit. And the, if you want to allocate the budget for the CSR activities, uh, this is budget is based on their profit or based on their, their sales, you know, the FedEx global activities. That some entities very profitable, some is not so profitable. Yeah. So the, how to decide the budget? Yeah, it's certainly I think at a, at a global level for FedEx, <coughs> Profit is, is a big part of it, of course. I mean, um, what's driving us to buy $200 million brand new airplanes versus old airplanes we can get for $70 million? Um, 
the economics of it. Now the benefit, of course, is the CO2 emissions. So it's saving us money and it's helping the environment. That, that's going to be a priority, right? Um, I mean, here, here in Thailand, you know, I'm not budgeted money based upon uh, the, the success of, of the program in, in economic terms because certainly with Safe Kids, I, I, I'm not going to have any really economic benefit from that, uh, but the community will. You know, so mine is, is really more of a set budget, but just like solar facilities, one would say, well, why don't we have solar facilities here? I mean, in, in general, we're putting solar facilities where they make business sense, and they make environmental sense, we already know that. And I think it is up to governments to help guide companies in how you, uh, how you make certain things attractive, right? So you're, you're, you're looking at that profitability. Um, you do this because it's right, it's a good thing for the communities, but it's also, you know, economically, beneficial. But in, in these programs in Thailand, we're looking at human achievement, the Safe Kids and Anchan Channel Foundation. It's really more of giving back and monitoring the program and, and seeing that it's really doing what it's set out to do. You know, in some of these places, because the needs of the schools around Thailand are not so much in Bangkok or in the Eastern Seaboard, where there's plenty of companies and plenty of money, but they're further out. And I don't even deliver to some of those cities that, that are way out in, in those areas. But um, we'll be there someday, and we're just giving back to the community and really bringing that spirit of community support into, into our, our team members here at Bangkok. Uh, <coughs> Robert Lear, Alternative Innovations. A very gentle presentation you made, thank you. Um, a uh, rather odd question perhaps, but uh, there was that old FedEx movie with Tom Hanks, which is quite a long time ago yeah. now. Uh -huh. uh, I was just wondering, um, what, just as a point of information, was it a true story? Uh, and then how, what kind of effect did that movie have on your business? Was there any noticeable rise or fall? Because uh, the near plane going down is not very encouraging, and yet his determined spirit to deliver was quite encouraging, so, yeah. yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I mean, I happened to, a uh, great question for me, because I happened to work in Los Angeles when they filmed the movie. That was my base. And they filmed a lot of the movie in LA. Um, all the areas you see that were Russia and here and there, and just Los Angeles made to look like that. Um, but no, the, the, it's not a true story. But the way it came about, um, originally, uh, the chairman, who actually, Fred Smith and Tom Hanks were on a co-chair for the World War II Memorial. They got to know each other. And Tom Hanks was uh, reading the script, and there was no company identified. And he approached Fred Smith in a conversation, and then their people approached each other. But two things. The plane blew up, which is certainly bad for the image, right? And secondly, they made the wine in the cockpit in one scene. So Fred said, uh, I'd love to do this, but I have to have some creative control, and these two things have to go. And of course, they said, no, that's not going to happen. Um, but then the marketing folks convinced him that, you know, this is Tom Hanks, this is a Bob Zemeckis film. I mean, this is going to be a great film. And we're not paying anything for it. You know, this was just going to be us in there. Where can you buy this kind of advertising? So he did relent, and we, we, we did the film. And, um, he, you know, the, the plane blown up and, and the whole bit, as you saw. Um, but what it do for business, just I'm not sure if I got one story I can tell you, a personal experience. So when I lived in LA, I covered Australia in that area. I used to go in, you know, we get a discount for currency exchange if you're an airline. I would show them my badge and they would say, what kind of airline is that? That's not an airline, never heard of that. Now our plane was parked out there on the runway every day. I mean, they've heard of us. That's changed. I mean, it did make us a, a worldwide brand, even in markets where we don't have a great market share, maybe we're small, but we're, we're well known. And I think a lot of it was from, from that movie. It certainly wasn't that case with me. Once they saw the movie, you know, I had no problem uh, currency exchange. FedEx was a, a household name. But uh, I don't ever, I don't think we thought it was going to be as, as big as it was. And, um, you know, really the, the plane blowing up certainly uh, isn't a, a good message, but I don't think it detracted from the brand at all. And that was the worry. So, yeah, interesting movie. We did fly their freight for free to the uh, South Pacific, and they had use of our facilities in need, but then there's no entertainment. So it's probably the, the best advertising bargain that we've ever had in our lives. 
Anybody else? Um, hello, my name is Mark. I have a question about the, the motivations, your motivations to um, select these different thematic areas. Um, why you didn't decide to go into education? You said disaster preparedness and response. Sustainability was quite a broad uh, thematic area, so you can maybe detail a little bit what you mean by sustainability too. Um, and the fourth one was, sorry, I forgot. It's so bad. <laughs> but just, just if you can tell us what, the, what motivates FedEx at a global level or at a high level uh, yeah. to my best in those, those areas. Yeah. Well, certainly, you know, we're a company that enables global trade, right? So, and open access, open markets which is controversial, of course. Um, so we, we want to put our, uh, our brand behind, behind that, because we do believe opening up markets, bringing down barriers to trade, people's, people's standard of living rise. So when, when we focus these programs on education, we're talking about FedEx Global brand now, and I'll talk about Thailand a little bit later, but when we look at this, this uh, program that we're coming into, like the Junior Achievement, it's really focused at entrepreneurship and how you know you break down trade barriers and why you need to and why it's good for people and that's why they're doing a product and they're talking about how they're going to distribute it. So it's it's focused on really getting the understanding that uh, this business is going to help you do that. So it's a business component, right? So that's that international trade challenge. And with safe kids, of course, you know it's it's a tremendous liability out there. Uh, with our drivers out there every day. We, we've had some horrible uh, instances that everybody has. So it's really about how can we make the roads safer everywhere in the world, including you started in the US, how can we make it safer? So that's a business component as well, but also great for the community. Um, in, in Thailand, of course, those are the two key corporate programs that really every local market would participate in. It wouldn't really be up to me to say, you know, gee, I don't like your achievement too much, I want to divert to somewhere else. You know, I'll, that's the corporate guidance now. But they give me some flexibility where you want to use the rest of your focus, right? Uh, so we use it in different areas, you know. Right? We partnered up with a with an NGO that was, the tree planting thing was planting native trees that had all been ripped out with logging years ago and put fast growth trees in. They were being ripped out and put the natural tree back in. So we did that for a little while. Um, I look at it as education, just uh, the education system needs a lot of assistance here. And so we are involved in Teacher Plus Foundation to really have a retraining and, and refresher training for teachers and just the education. So um, we've gotten involved in that just again through partnering up with the with Amcham Charitable Foundation. The scholarships it was just a, a selection of hey, they're coming into town, they need uh, support. Um, let's do that and fit the program is in the educational side because here we're a pretty small company here basically CSR programs is me and my marketing person so um, you know what I really leveraged Jan Jan Charitable Foundation was that they did a lot of the vetting I didn't have to actually get out there and find schools in need and find programs like I could really just support programs they had going on and then it could change you know um, to different different things. We're always looking for you know, feedback from team members, from senior managers, what they see as areas that we can focus on next. But um, quite frankly, the Amsterdam Trevor Foundation does a lot of the work for me. You know, so I, I benchmark on that one and I, the programs are sustainable and continue to grow. There's uh, many programs under that umbrella. Uh, we just help on a, on a few. So um, that's, that's why it's kind of gravitating that way. Any more questions? Gloria, you want to go with the, the other question? <laughs> it's more about, um, do you have a program where you teach your drivers, like uh, the driving skills or? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I mean, we have, we, we, we use the Smith training system from the US. We've had US trainers out here. What we do is we train driver instructors. So some of our couriers, Maybe 10 percent of them, let's say, will be driver instructors, uh, and, and our managers. So they'll be trained in driving instructor. But it is interesting because this is, you know, the the five scene habits that you maybe have heard of this in driving: aim high and steering, get the big picture, get yourself an out, make sure they see you, 
you, you probably know it from being in the logistics field, but we've, you have to tailor that entirely, right? Otherwise, it's meaningless. Leave yourself an hour. You leave yourself an hour, you never move anywhere. People are going in front of you. So we, we've had people come out from the U.S. and really tailor that program to Thailand. Uh, so, so, so it would work. I mean, it's really about defensive driving, but here you can't be completely defensive because, for example, there, there may not be a right turning light there. And if you're waiting for no cars to come, you wouldn't make a right turn, you know. So it's, it's tailored to that, and, and we do a lot of training in that area, a very, uh, very important area. And uh, the other question is, do you have three competitive partnership with other companies? So like, uh, that you would partner up with other businesses, not under the Amsterdam umbrella, outside of that. With other businesses in, in CSR program? Yeah, uh, yeah. Not usually, um, but we could. For example, uh, the Amsterdam Scholarship Foundation originally started, we were giving 80 or 90 scholarships, now we're giving 200, and that may be more than FedEx could afford, and they may offer that another company to support it as well. And that would be fine, you know, but normally I wouldn't seek out another company to have a program together, but uh, would I want, you know, a direct competitor to be a co-sponsor? Probably not, but any other company would, would, would work out and, uh, and that, would be, that would be something that would be fine. Anybody else before we wrap up? Hello. Um, I'd like to ask about the employees' involvement in these programs. I mean, how much they have to be involved or is on a voluntary basis? Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's all voluntary basis. We don't, we don't make anybody do it, but we try to make it fun so they'll do it. You know, with some of the schools, you know, it's a five-hour bus ride to get to. So what we would do is uh, make it an overnight event, maybe or a team building event type of thing, so they, they would get more volunteers. Um, the Sunday we're doing the Makassan Community Center I mentioned, uh, uh, it's just lunch and a, and a day out, but we got 120 people to do it, so it worked out well. Um, I think it, it was slow in the beginning, as we, we started back in 2007 and 8, really focused on some things that was a bit a bit slow, especially the five-hour bus ride type of thing. There wasn't any volunteers the first time, but I think the word got around. It was fun. Uh, you know, you had some time with your friends. And many, many of my folks had never even really been out of Bangkok. I was surprised how many hadn't been to first school we was in Bodhidak. And, you know, they had, had been out there. So uh, they enjoyed it. That word caught on. And then we try to get the word out of what we're doing, how long it's going to take, what, what fun we're going to have as well. So they know going into it, you know, they're going to be gone doing this, doing that, and then having dinner and staying here and just wherever we stay. Uh, so yeah, that's how we, we've been successful at kind of getting them, getting involved. Any more? Okay. Well, on behalf of uh, SACS and the Impact members and our guests, I would like to thank you with this certificate of appreciation.